Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and welcome to version 2 of C++ Crash Course. Now in this episode of the series, we're going to be going over functions and overloading. So let's go ahead and begin. And we'll start with functions.cpp. So a lot of times when we're writing code, there'll be something, some kind of uh, operation that we're going to do many times. So this could be something like matrix multiplication. Maybe we're going to do matrix multiplication, you know, twice, three, four, 20 times inside of a program. What we'd really like to avoid doing is to have a huge increase in the size of our program by copying and pasting those, you know, 10, 20 lines of code uh, as many times as we need to do matrix multiplication. So instead of that, we can group, say, matrix multiplication or the code associated with matrix multiplication together and place it inside of a function. That way, whenever I want to do matrix multiplication, I don't need those 10, 20 lines of code. I just need to call a function. So it allows us to write code once and reuse it. So let's look at a couple examples here. So we have three functions here, and functions are really composed of four different things. The first thing is uh, the return type. The next thing is the function name. Then we have a list of parameters, and then we have the function body. So the return type just says, what does this function return? So if I say I want to call some function, I may want it to return some value back to me. So for that, I can specify a return type. So this, re this function returns an integer. This function returns a floating point number, and this function returns a double precision floating point number. And then in order to return something from a function, right, we just use this return keyword. So in this case, this print and ink int returns whatever i is plus one, so returns whatever this expression returns. Okay, so the next part is the function name. Now this is just how we, uh, this is just what we use to call the function. So when I wanna call print and ink int, I just need to write print and ink int inside of, say, my main function, for example. But I can also call functions from other functions if I wanted to. So the next thing that we have is the parameters. So these are just what I want to pass into the function. So something like matrix multiplication or dot product or, um, you know, maybe you want to print out a log file. Maybe it has some kind of input. So in this case, we have an input of a single integer that we'll refer to as i. So this is a parameter to the function. And then we can see that we take an integer i we print it out, we print out the size of an integer, and then we return whatever that integer value is plus one, right? And just this uh, second function, this print and ink float does the same thing, but with a floating point number. And then the same thing for this print and ink double, but a double precision. And then the final part of this is just the function body. So this is a lot like our main function. Uh, whatever we have enclosed in these curly braces, this is what gets executed whenever we call the function. Right, so that's a little bit about defining functions. So let's go down to the actual call site. So to call a function, right, we just have to give the function name. So I want to call print and ink int. And then I pass in whatever I want to pass as an input to the function. So this is known as an argument. So up here in the definition, these are uh, parameters. And then what we're actually passing in at the call site, this is a function argument. So here I'm passing in i as an argument. So I've got i defined right here. And then I have uh, this floating point number SP and another and a double precision number DP. Now, in this case, right, the, the function arguments and the parameters have the same name. But that doesn't have to be true. So we could change, you know, I to instead be integer, right? And we could say pass in uh, integer here. I'm just doing this because my uh, linter will yell at me uh, if I don't. So here I've changed all the occurrences of i to integer now. So I don't need to have the same parameter name as I have an argument name, right? They can be completely separate names. They just have to be the same type. Okay, so let's go ahead and reset that. And then we see where my return value goes. So I said that you know this function returns an integer, this function returns a float, and then this function returns a double. So all we, we can just call a function, right? And we can set some value equal to the return of that function. So when this function says it returns an integer, I can say, you know, i is now equal to whatever this function returns, right? Which in this case is just going to be i plus one. Same thing for the single precision and the double precision number. All right, and then all we do in this program, it's pretty simple. We just call the functions and then we print out the new values. So let's go ahead and uh, run this. So we'll use G++ functions dash O, and then we'll just call the output functions. And let's run it. And so we see we've got um, our value and size that were printed out inside of the functions. 
and then we get the return values and we print those out as well. So we see that 4362, for example, was incremented to be 4363 now. All right, pretty simple. So how does this look like from a more implementation point of view? So let's actually look at the assembly using object dump. So we'll do object dump dash D um, on functions, and then we'll put it into this file out.asm, and we'll open up out.asm. So the first thing we need to do is we need to kind of orient ourselves. So let's find the main function. So here's our actual main function. And if we go ahead and step down a little bit, we see that we have this call queue here. Now this call queue, it has a name that we're familiar with. So it looks a little bit different. So it says print n ink int, and then there's a little bit of, you know, uh, some other characters that are around the size of it. But this is actually our function call. So what happens when we call a function? Um, well, inside of our assembly, uh, one of the possibilities is that we get this call queue, and it gives us a value here. Now this is actually an address, this 9c5 right here. So when we go ahead and look up that address, we see that it takes me to a different part of the program called print and ink int, right? And so what actually happens is just like we see in our normal C++ code, when we call a function, we move to a different part of the function, we execute this code, and then we see that down here, we've got this return. So this just returns control back to where we called from. So we'll return control back to um, where we called from the main function. And then we see we have our other function calls here as well. So we have print and ink float, and then print and ink double. Okay, so that's kind of the basics of how these functions look from a low level. Now let's talk about something that's uh, a little more in depth. And um, we'll start talking about function signatures uh, and we'll do that in the context of talking about overloading. So it was a little bit annoying to have, you know, print and ink int, print and ink float, print and ink double, right? Having to specify unique names when we're writing a function, right? Seems kind of annoying. Well, we don't have to do that, right? So let's look at overloading. So let's say I, these functions do pretty much the exact same thing, and I don't want to have to manually write, a, come up with a new name for every single data type. Uh, because I don't want to have to remember that at the call site. So, you know, I have a data type and I have to go print an ink. Oh, what's this data type again? Oh, it's an integer. So I'll call it print an ink int. I'd rather just call, say, print an ink for every single data type I have. So in this case, right, I can use what's known as overloading. So I can have functions that have the same name. So here I have print an ink, print an ink, print an ink. So they all have the same name. They do the exact same thing as in the original code right, in the, uh, our functions.cpp, and the rest of it's the exact same example. So let's see what happens when we run this. So we'll do g++ overloading.cpp, and then we'll just call the output overload. And then we'll run overload, and we see that we get exactly what we'd expect, right, we increment these numbers by one, and we print out the new values. Okay, so what's going on here? Why was I able to give them the same name? Well, as you kind of saw inside of the uh, inside of the assembly, you know our function names didn't translate one to one with how we'd expect. There was some extra characters around the side, and a lot of this comes from the fact that there's this thing in C++ called name mangling. So, how do you determine, you know, or how does the compiler figure out uh, if a function is different? And a lot of it comes from uh, the three main parts of a function, which are the return type, the name of the function and then the uh, parameter list, right? Or the parameters that a function takes, right? So these are all kind of mashed together, right? And it mangles the original name of the function and it creates a unique name that it can identify. So what we really have to worry about is not necessarily having um, functions that have different names. All we really need to worry is about making sure that functions have a different signature, right? That's what the key part is, right? So a function can have um, the same name as long as it has a different signature, which is what we have going on here. So we have int, print and ink, int, right? So it returns an int, it takes, uh, it takes, uh, or it has a name of print and ink, and then it takes an int, right? But the compiler can, di can uh, distinguish between this one because it returns a float now, and it takes a float, right? So the compiler can determine that these two things are different, because the entirety of the signature is different. And the, the signature does not, have, uh, does not have anything to do with, say, this print and ink 
and or it doesn't have to do anything with this I right here. All that matters right here is the type, right? Not the actual, um, not the actual name of the parameter. So let's see an example of how the compiler will yell at you if you, if you don't do this. So let's say I have another print and ink I, and this time it returns I plus two. So the function body is different, but I have the same name. So my compiler actually gives me a warning. It says redefinition of print and ink. So what's the problem here? The problem here is that the signature for these two functions, even though they do different things, is exactly the same. So the compiler has to determine how do I call this function, right? And so down here, I have a call to print an ink. It's going to return an integer and it takes an integer. So what the compiler will do is it will look for, okay, I'm calling a function called print an ink. It returns an integer and it takes an integer. And it will see two functions that do that. Now the compiler can't tell exactly what you meant because these two functions from an interface point of view look exactly the same. So what it does is it says, okay, I can't figure this out. You clearly have a redefinition error. You have two functions with the same signature. And then you can see that if we could change this int i to int, you know, whatever we want, this has no effect on uh, this redefinition error. So it's still um, a redefinition error. Okay, so let's go ahead and get rid of that. And we'll save. And then let's go ahead and recompile this. So we'll do G++ again. And now let's look at the assembly for this, right? So we'll use object dump dash D for disassemble and then overload. It will open up out.asm. So you can see that there are still three calls to print an ink now, and they all look slightly different. Now, a better way to look at this is actually to pass an additional flag to object dump which is this dash D and then C. So this actually gets rid of the uh, C++ name mangling. So now if I open up out.asm, we see exactly what um, this function is doing. So we have print an ink that takes an integer, right? Print an ink that takes a float. Print an ink that takes a double, right? So now I have a very clear look and I, I, know, I understand now how the compiler differentiates between these functions, right? because it mangles them along with, say, the parameters, right, and the return types, so it can determine, you know, what's going on here. I have functions that are named the same thing, but do different things, right? But because the mangling is part of the function signature, or the, it's a mangled name with the signature of the function, the compiler can determine which function it should call based upon things like the name and the parameters and the return type. All right. So, Let's go ahead and, so let's see, we can also say change this to be, you know, unsigned. And then here what happens, it says call to print and ink is ambiguous. It doesn't like that if we change the type, right? We're passing in an integer, but up here we're referring to it as a, an unsigned number, right? And then we change it back to int and it should fix it. All right, so that's a little bit on functions and function overloading and how your compiler actually distinguishes between these uh, between different functions. It's not just based upon the function name, it's actually based upon more than that. It's about it's based on things like um, the function signature, its return type, uh, not the actual name of the parameters, but the parameter types. All right, so that's gonna go ahead and do it for this video. As always, feel free to check out any of this stuff at github.com slash coffee before arch. So here we have everything under C++ Crash Course, under fundamental concepts, we looked at functions uh, today, so take a look at functions.cpp or overloading.cpp. Let me know if you have any questions or if there's any uh, specific examples that you would like to see. But that's going to do it for today. As always, I'm Nick, and I hope you have a nice day.